What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. And we're doing a little uh, strat video today, okay? The next three days, we are going to be doing the optimal, the number one draft strategy from every pick on the board. Not every single pick, but we're going to break down today's video into picks one through four. So if you have the first, second, third, or fourth pick, today will be a video. Probably doesn't help you out, but hopefully helps you out. Tomorrow's video will be picks five through eight. The day after that will be picks nine through 12. So if you're new to the channel and you are one of those other picks, make sure you subscribe and uh, check out the video tomorrow and the day after, whatever, whatever, whatever. So what we're going to do here is pick from a random spot in one through four. I'll probably do the third spot or whatever. And I'm going to go through the optimal strategy based on all the trends and the changes and the player developments and the rumors and the reports and what we've heard through the grapevine over the last couple months and what I've watched happen through drafts because I've done so many damn drafts. I've so many mock drafts, so many paid drafts already where I've seen players ADPs sharpen up. They've, they've hardened up and we know where they're going and we know what players are going at which parts of the draft. So we know the strategy in which to attack them. Okay. Now the, the draft I'm going to do today, basically I'm going to minimize my fucking stupid face put it in the corner of the video, and we're going to do an actual fantasy draft today. And the draft I'm going to do is going to be super flex, but as we're going through, it's going to be for people in one quarterback leagues as well. I will be talking about what I would do differently if I'm in a one quarterback league versus a super flex league, but the draft board itself will be a super flex draft board. And I just want to throw it out there because I know a lot of y'all just bitch about everything. And we don't do the same flex. Shh. Switch your fucking league to Superflex, okay? And then comment back down here one year later telling me that you still want me to do one quarterback stuff. Regardless, the analysis today will be both one quarterback and Superflex related. Picks one through four, the number one draft strategy in the way to attack your draft perfectly this draft season, okay? That's what we got. So before we start the video, I want I literally want everybody watching right now, whether you're on your phone, whether you're on your desktop, your computer, your tablet, your fucking, you got your TV bumping right now. I want you all to stand up. I want you to tuck your shirts in. You turn the volume down a little bit. Stop yelling. And let's see. All right, so we'll keep things nice and crispy and even for y'all. So we'll start off at the uh, at the one three. I feel like that's that's fair. Nobody can yell at me, and it'll work for most strategies. So we're gonna start the draft at the one oh three. And again, we're gonna do this from picks five through eight. We're gonna do it from nine through twelve as well tomorrow and the day after that. So if you have picks like that in your other leagues, make sure you're subscribed. You can watch those as they flood into your face holes. So this is a super flex league. And uh, here's here's the thing about these videos. Like you'll see, okay, Patrick Mahomes went off the board 101. That won't be too crazy in super flex leagues. Derrick Henry at the 102 above Christian McCaffrey. That's not going to happen. But the point of these videos is not to necessarily go nuts about the players I'm drafting. You're not going to be like, oh, this is unrealistic because Christian McCaffrey never fall there. The point of this is to give you guys a strategy, a general baseline of the trends that I've seen with players and how drafts have gone so that when you're at the 103, if Christian McCaffrey doesn't fall to you, you don't freak the fuck out, right? The point here I'm going to echo with being a top four or five pick is the fact that you get one of these high-end running backs. So normally, you know, Derrick Henry or Christian McCaffrey would go two. We're going to take McCaffrey because obviously you're going to do that in a, in a normal league. But typically he would go two, and then I would take a guy like Dalvin Cook here instead of Christian McCaffrey. But the point remains, if you're in the top four picks, you're going to want to go with a running back up front. I'll say this over and over again all summer long. The biggest advantage you could have in fantasy football, it's not having a high-end quarterback in super flex leagues. It's not having a wide receiver that gets 180 targets. It's not having Travis Kelsey at tight end. It is having an elite RB1 in fantasy football. That's it. Those are the difference makers, the point per game difference makers, the ones that actually get you to the hardware. OK, so we're sitting here at the 210 and we're going to go through super flex leagues. We're going to go through one quarterback leagues or, you know, if you're in a one quarterback league, you're obviously just letting quarterbacks drop. Uh, maybe we'll get into a little bit more than that. Typically, if I'm leaving a super flex draft in the first three rounds, I do want to leave with one of the top six quarterbacks, seven quarterbacks, one of the ones that are in like the top tier. Okay. And this year it feels like there are about seven in that top tier. You have Mahomes, Kyler, Josh Allen, and, and I know they're in a different tier after like Mahomes. And in my opinion, Kyler Murray, but Josh Allen, Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson. Then you start to get to an area where you say, okay, is Aaron Rodgers in that tier? In my opinion, I think the argument can be made. Here's where you have to decide. You have a couple guys at running back. You have a couple guys at wide receiver. So Diggs is in a tier of his own, in my opinion, with the guys left. You have Aaron Jones, 
you have some guys like Gibson, Mixon, Swift. I think they all have their question marks. So you have to ask yourself, if I take Aaron Jones, if I take a second running back here, am I okay missing the tier from Rodgers to whoever's next? If I take Diggs here, am I okay missing the tier from Aaron Jones to whoever's next? So you ask yourself, who's the most valuable player on the board here? Because the options are still open to have to, to be flexible with your team. And when I'm doing a super flex draft, I, without a doubt, value running backs more than lower end quarterback ones. I value running backs more than wide receiver ones. However, in this particular instance, Aaron Jones for me is in a tier above these other guys. So if I take Diggs here and I try to get Aaron Jones to the 3-3, it's not going to happen. So I would go with Aaron Jones here. Typically, I'm going to start with two running backs. However, if these are the running backs left here at the 210, all guys that I think are a tier below Aaron Jones, there's probably a chance that I go with Rodgers here to cement my quarterback one because there's a teardrop for me here. And I'm more comfortable with the teardrop off here than I am at the quarterback position. Okay. So that's what you need to be thinking about. You need to be thinking about tier drop offs. You know, what's the difference between Aaron Jones to these guys? And statistically, we don't know what the difference is going to end up being at the end of the season. But what we do know is Aaron Jones has RB1 overall upside in his range of outcomes. So a backfield of C Mac and Aaron Jones in your lineup is gorgeous. And I don't think the drop off in points per game from Aaron Rodgers to a guy like Brady or Matthew Stafford will be that noticeable in fantasy football this year. I won't argue against going digs again, though, like my early round strategy, and it really probably doesn't matter where I'm picking from. We'll see in the in the video I make tomorrow and the one after that. My early round strategy is almost always to stay away from wide receivers unless your league skews heavily towards making them semi equal in almost 99% of league formats right now that start two wide receivers or is half PPR. There's no advantage to picking a wide receiver over a running back that could finish as a top five, top three fantasy running back. And I think Aaron Jones is the only one realistically that has that range of outcomes for him right now. So we're going to go with Jones here and cement our first two running backs. And we'll see. Diggs fell to me in the third round. So Diggs fell to me in the third round. That's not typically what we're going to see here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that Diggs does not fall that far because I don't think there's a chance that that actually happens in real drafts. What, what will happen though, is you will get your choice of Metcalf, AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson, Calvin Ridley there, and Aaron Rodgers is still there for me. So in a super flex league, I want to lock up one high-end quarterback in the first three rounds, okay? Because once you get to, you know, some people like to go with two two quarterbacks off the rip or two quarterbacks in the first three rounds, and I feel like that's a mistake. I feel like that's a mistake because once you get past the elite tier, quarterbacks are changing in fantasy football this year especially. Quarterbacks are changing because the high-end ones, even in one quarterback leagues, do make a difference now. A lot of the ones with rushing upside or a lot of ones with like 45 to 50 passing touchdown upside, we're seeing way more of those be prevalent in fantasy than we have in recent years. It is really, really useful to get your hands on, oh, oh, bike it up, bike it up, sir. It's really useful to get your hands on one of the top quarterbacks. If Aaron Rodgers was off the board right now, there's a good chance that I actually wait on quarterback and I take two quarterbacks with my next two picks. But because I have a high-end quarterback sitting there, I'm going to grab him up. And you might say, why would I take uh, Rodgers over Diggs? Again, we're going to pretend Diggs is not there, but why would I take Rodgers over A.J. Brown or... Uh, Justin Jefferson or Calvin Ridley, who could be the wide receiver one. I would think twice about Calvin Ridley because I think his upside is so fucking high. But the positional scarcity, again, the reason you don't do wide receivers is because there's so many of them that you can be comfortable playing in any of your spots when there's two positions. Like if you're in a one quarterback league, there's no positional scarcity at quarterback, but there is in super flex. So you want to be going early and often on running backs and quarterbacks in your super flex draft. So typically I'd like to leave the first three rounds with two running backs and a quarterback. So we'll go with Rogers here and we'll see what happens when it falls back to me. We'll start to see that rip of wide receivers go off the board, which is what typically happens in almost every draft that I've been in so far. You see the Diggs, Jefferson, A.J. Brown, Ridley, like the elite, but not so elite tier yet. And there we go. I feel good because we don't have to take a quarterback right now. There's still a big tier of guys I'd be comfortable with as my quarterback, too. The way I look at super flex leagues is very, very similar to the way I look at one quarterback leagues, except the way you look at your one quarterback is how I would look at my second in super flex. OK, so think of it this way. You want one high end quarterback in super flex. But with your quarterback two spot, you don't need another one of those because the quarterback eight, nine or ten is not a huge difference maker points per game than 15, 17, 18, 19. If you're looking at the statistics, it's just a proven fucking fact. Fact. Basically, you look at yourself and say, okay, if I'm in a one quarterback league, what's the last quarterback that I'm comfortable starting in my lineup, right? What's the last quarterback that I see? Is he my quarterback 19 or something? You know, Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield, Daniel Jones. If I'm comfortable starting him in my one quarterback lineup, 
I should be started. I should be comfortable using that person as my quarterback two in super flex and two quarterback lineups. That's the way you need to. Uh, that's the way you need to approach these drafts. So whatever the last viable QB one is that you'd be fine in a one quarterback league is the same way you should be looking at it for super flex. And for me, if I'm in a super flex league, I'm fine with any of these guys left on the board here: Tom Brady, Trevor Lawrence, Ryan Tannehill, Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins. And then you know it becomes personal, like depending on if you're fine with uh, Tua. You're fine with Daniel Jones. If you're fine with Ryan Fitzpatrick, then that's something to consider. Whoever you're most comfortable with as your quarterback, too, that's who you should be aiming for. You don't need two high end quarterbacks in these types of leagues. So we have two running backs, and I feel good about it. What I really like to do here oh, well, I love Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen is a whole different tier above for me. And I think in super flex leagues, there's a really strong possibility that a guy like that does fall to you here. Now, if I'm in a one quarterback league, there's two different strategies that I like to take at the beginning of the, or the end of the fourth, early fifth round. And one of them involves taking Kyler Murray here because Kyler Murray typically falls to this range. This is where I've seen him go over and over and over again, the four, nine, all the way to the five, four. So if you have one of the first four picks, there's a very good chance that Kyler Murray falls to you in this range. And typically I'm okay using a pick there on Kyler Murray. Let Patrick Mahomes go in the third round, take Kyler Murray at the four twelve, at the five, three or whatever. And, uh, and then be set at quarterback for the year. Cause don't forget Kyler Murray was the quarterback one from one from weeks one to 16. He was on pace to set the record for most fantasy points scored ever in a season prior to injuring his shoulder in week 11. So one of the things I like to do here, we're starting to see Darrell Henderson's ADP settle down a little bit. And I actually really like him in this area. I think this is an area that you get him. So if you do end up going with like a Stefan Diggs, if you do end up going with two quarterbacks, Darrell Henderson is usually sitting here to be your RB2 or your flex spot. And I don't think Darrell Henderson necessarily has the wherewithal to be what Cam Akers was, but he could be a really good running back two, a running back three with RB1 weekly upside. So I'm a big fan of going with like a Kyler Murray, Darrell Henderson in this area. Otherwise, you're probably loading up on wide receivers like, you know, in a super flex league, you're going to have a lot better options fall to you down here, like Keenan Allen, like CeeDee Lamb, those kind of guys. But typically you're deciding between two wide receivers in maybe Godwin, DJ Moore, Jamar Chase, Brandon Ayuk, Deontay Johnson, those guys. So if you go heavy, you know, if it's one quarterback league, you're probably going to start your draft off with two really solid running backs, maybe even three or uh, or a, a wide receiver one up here in your first three rounds. And then you're looking at, again, I like Kyler. Uh, then you can get a second really strong wide receiver or Daryl Henderson there. So we're going to go with Keenan because I'm really, really high on Keenan this year. Y'all know that. And we're starting to see a little bit of a run of quarterbacks right now. And I think I want to dip back into that pool to make sure that uh, by the time I'm picking next, it's not like Sam Darnold that I am left with. So you kind of ride the wave there. I could take Darrell Henderson, but luckily I already have two really good running backs up top. And if you're in a super flex, yes, it's, it's okay to leave your first five rounds, six rounds with your two quarterbacks. And, uh, and I will do that. I hate Matt Ryan, really like Baker Mayfield, really like Kirk Cousins. I'm not going to go with like a, a Justin Fields or a Trey Lance yet. I'm a little bit hesitant still that we see them until we have real news where we feel like Trey Lance has a real shot of getting onto the fields in the first half of the year. I'm probably going to be fading those guys in super flex unless they fall to me at value. So I'm a big fan of Baker. I feel like this offense is wildly efficient. I'll take my quarterback two here. Most of my super flex leagues, if I'm in picks one through four, this is how you'll see uh, most of my lineups go five rounds in two quarterbacks, two running backs and a wide receiver. You know, and a lot of you guys, you might you might be looking at the draft picks and say like tip for tap, punch for punch, pound for pound. The wide receivers are more talented. But again, I think when it comes to super flex and it, when it comes to how the makeups of most fantasy football leagues are nowadays, it's not as much as picking the best player. It really is more about strategy and it's more about game theory and it's more about, again, positional mother. Take a drink every time I say positional scarcity and you will be dead by the end of this video. Um, but it's really important. By positional scarcity, what I mean is like there are not that many options. You know, there's probably 25 to 30 running backs that you're comfortable putting into your lineup. There's probably 25, 20 to 25 quarterbacks that you're comfortable putting in your lineups and you need two of each position to start. With wide receivers, there are 70 to 80 wide receivers in fantasy like we can go down the list that you're comfortable putting into your lineup, like all the way down at pick 123, Antonio Brown. I love that. I'm fine putting Michael Gallup at pick 135. In friends and family leagues, you'll be fine with Michael Gallup. Russell Gage, 110 targets last year, 22nd in the NFL. No more Julio Jones, 150th pick. Okay. In a PPR league, he can be your wide receiver three. If you go down to that pick 150 with the running backs, looking at fucking Jamal Williams, Kenneth Gainwell, Philip, like it's really ugly down there when it's not. And that's why it's important. It's like, yes, some of the wide receivers might be better that are going off the board in terms of the picks that I'm making. But when it comes to building a roster that can't be undersold. All right. So we're going 
into the back end of the sixth round. And the back end of the sixth round is becoming an interesting spot. Now, I have two really obvious candidates that I like here that I will probably be grabbing. But I think if you do miss on running backs, this is a really interesting spot to grab guys that I had originally started fading, but I'm getting higher on. Uh, you could choose usually between Mike Davis, Chase Edmonds, and I like Damian Harris, even though he's all the way down there. Uh, I could probably wait on him, but I think when real leagues come around, you'll probably have to start picking Damian Harris in the early to mid seventh round. So when we're looking at this spot, this is where you can get like a high end wide receiver two or low end RB twos that can be your flex spots if you want a little bit more security at those spaces. I will say, you know, with Mike Davis, he just feels like a guy that everything is set up for him to just be a workhorse, right? Everything is set up for him to get a ton of volume. Everything is set up for him to, I don't know, dominate touches in that backfield. But it just feels like one way or another, when we look back, it's it's just not going to have been the Mike Davis show. I don't know how. I don't know why. If it's going to be this offensive line stinks, his offense stinks, somewhat Quadri Allison or Javian Hawkins starts taking more work than we anticipated. Like something feels like it's going to go wrong for Mike Davis. So I've been fading him, but he used to go in the early fifth round. But now at the back of the sixth round, early seventh round, you are starting to get your pick of these guys, Mike Davis, Chase Edmonds, uh, Damian Harris. But because there's, there are some really good wide receivers to left on the board, y'all know I'm a fan of Cooper Cup over Robert Woods because I think the touchdown upside is realer, is more real, is the fucking realist. So I'm going to go with Cooper Cup, and I really hope Brandon Ayuk falls back to me. Oh, boy. these Ah, motherfucker. I'm playing against a goddamn computer, and they're still sniping me. Okay, so this, this actually puts me in a tricky predicament here because I can double tap the LA wide receivers. And I would literally, I would have went with any of these three wide receivers over Robert Woods, not because I think they're going to be better, even though I do, but because I'm not sure I actually want to go and monopolize this passing game. I probably should, but if something happens to Stafford, he's already like hurt at camp doing reckless shit. It could be an issue for my team. That being said, there aren't a lot of great options amongst the other positions. If TJ Hawkinson was here, I would absolutely smash that. I like T Higgins too. Again, I'm still a little bit worried about, about Joe Burrow something I've echoed pretty loudly. And then the report came out about his knee him not being mentally 100%, which, you know, I've been saying that for a long time. But it's definitely between Robert Woods. It's definitely between T. Higgins. I'm going to take Robert Woods here. Typically, I would tell you guys to diversify. I actually made a YouTube short on this last week uh, talking about taking players from the same offense. And I'm perfectly fine with it as long as you know that this offense is going to be good. So if they're a bottom half offense, if you're, if you're not sure that the offense is going to be very good. I don't stack skill players on that offense for the sake of something goes wrong. Everything's going to go wrong with your team. But if you, you know, if you're looking at a Kansas city or a Buffalo or a Seattle or whatever, and you know that those offenses are going to run smoothly, I'm completely fine stacking a running back, a wide receiver, a wide receiver, tight end, two wide receivers or whatever. Um, unfortunately we don't have Matt Stafford. So that kills us on the double stack there with the wide receivers, but you know, Woods and cup, I think are both as safe as they come as wide receiver two threes here. So we kind of filled out our lineup for the most part, and then we'll see uh, We'll see what drops back to us here. Once we get, honestly, I almost feel like it's not really for these three videos. I don't know if I'm going to go past the 10th round because once you go there, ADP kind of falls out the fucking door, um, and the strategy is more important for when you're doing earlier drafts or early parts of the draft because ADP just flies out the window. So basically, you know, we have our two quarterbacks, and do we want to get a third quarterback? We can. Typically, if I'm doing super flex leagues this year, the smaller your league is, the easier it is to get quarterbacks. Obviously, the bigger your league is, the more urgency you need to put onto it. So if you're in a 14 team league, you want to make sure that you have three quarterbacks and pick them early because the scarcity is even scarier in in that in that hole because there's only 32 starting quarterbacks, obviously. For super flex leagues, I'm going to be looking to add high upside running guys as my third quarterback. I will wait on guys like Daniel Jones if he goes earlier than whatever. I missed out on him, but I am probably diversifying on my teams basically between Cam and Taysom Hill as my quarterback three. And these are the spots where you're taking your shots on high end or you know high end upside running backs and depth piece wide receivers. So my ideal combination here would be something of here, here, let's use the cue a little bit. I fucking love Robert Tunyon. Make sure you get Robert Tunyon everywhere this year, people. Robert Tunyon everywhere. And since we have Aaron Rodgers, we do want to stack that up a little bit. Jerry Judy feels like a tier of his own to me right now because of the Cortland Sutton not feeling 100% on his knee. And then we like Trey Sermon and we like Damian Harris a lot. So right now, I have four guys in the queue. I'll move myself over. Robert Tunyon, Jerry Judy, Trey Sermon, Damian Harris. Most of the time, I would tell you guys, you could let Robert Tunyon fall because you might have Tunyon in the same tier as basically the next six guys. I think I think the argument to be made between Gesicki, Tunyon, Thomas, Irv Smith, Tyler Higby, Joni Smith, whatever, Troutman are all in the same tier. For me personally, though, right? I'm trying to make this a strategy video, but player analysis wise, for me personally, Tunyon is a tier above. And I do have Aaron Rodgers, which makes me even more likely. And I do have Aaron Jones too. Fuck, I have a lot of Green Bay here. 
I'm going to go with Tunyon here just so I do not miss out on him. I don't want to chance it and have him not fall to me. Okay, Jerry Judy went off the board. Okay, well, we missed out on our fourth wide receiver, but that's okay. Uh, I don't think any of those guys are going to be, you know, game breakers. At the end of the day, all wide receiver twos and threes kind of perform equally. They'll end up putting up between like nine and 12 fantasy points per game. So I would rather shoot for high upside guys like Trey Sermon. If he takes over that backfield, he's going to be a fucking problem. If Damian Harris takes over that backfield, I think he probably will be a little bit less of a problem, but he's more likely to do so. So it's kind of your pick here uh, at these high upside younger running backs with the backfield to take over. I'm just going to go with fucking Damian Harris and move on. So we can look at the roster I have for you guys right now. Right now, it's Aaron Rodgers, Christian McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, Keenan Allen, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Robert Tunyon, Damian Harris, and Baker Mayfield as my super flex. And the quarterbacks are still trickling off the board extremely slowly, so we're okay there. Yeah, and then listen, once you get to this round again, I don't think it really matters where you are in the draft. Uh, I don't think it matters if your pick's three or seven or nine or ten or whatever. It's kind of just like get your guys, stack them up deep. We have our tight end, and we're looking at getting depth at wide receiver. We like Michael Gallup a lot. I think Corey Davis is probably a little bit underrated, but I probably like Elijah Moore because I think he has a lot more breakout potential towards the second half of the year. This is the other thing I would say about ninth, 10th, 11th round. This is the last round in which you are going to be able to secure running backs that you know are going to have a workload. So you know Zach Moss is going to have a split. It might not be a great split, but you know he's getting 45% of the opportunities for sure. You know a guy like Gus Edwards is going to get 45% of the opportunities um, so if you are not deep at running back, if you didn't grab any guys there and you just need volume, like the 10th round is pretty much the last round that you're going to be able to get those guys in. Um, so for me, that's kind of important. We have a little bit of depth at every position. We'll wait on quarterback again. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go with Zach Moss. We'll go with two fat running backs, bike to bike. So you'll start seeing those other running backs go off the board and you can't really get them. We'll go with Michael Gallup here. And that, that'll pretty much round out the the strategy video for this. Because again, once you get into the later rounds, like the strategy of, of where you're actually picking doesn't matter. But to recap a little bit, picking in the first four picks of drafts, whether it's one quarterback or whether it's two quarterbacks, super flex, whatever it is, I'm still going to be starting with running backs because it becomes really tough to fill those holes if you miss on them. Okay. If you want to go with Mahomes, if you want to go with Kyler Murray, there's a good chance that you can still get two running backs that are solid RB1s, high end RB2s. Like you can go Kyler Murray at three, and then you can get Aaron Jones and Gibson or Aaron Jones and JK Dobbins or Mixon, however you want to cut the cookie, right? And I think that's reasonable because only because in this particular year, you do have Kyler Murray, who I think has league winning potential at the quarterback position, which is very rare. But if a guy like Christian McCaffrey hits, he wins your league for you, right? There's no, there's no fucking way around that. So there's very few players that do that. Uh, a guy like Dalvin Cook, I think is in the same vein. So if you're sitting at the two, three, four, you want to do that, right? Those are guys you don't want to pass on. You don't want to pass on running backs that if they hit, they 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 win you the league, right? Um, there's chances that quarterbacks up that high, if they hit, they have good seasons, but don't win you the league, okay? So passing on league winning type of players early on in the draft, it's not going to lose your league, right? You're not going to lose your league by having Mahomes or Kyler Murray, but I don't think they elevate you to the point where you win your league. So we like to grab running backs early and often. We do that in one quarterback leagues. We do that in two quarterback leagues. I want to leave my first three, four rounds with two to three running backs, two to three quarterbacks or one to two quarterbacks. Okay. For sure. A lot of it's going to be tier based depending on, you know, if Aaron Rodgers is there at the three, three, as you can see from the three, three, all the way down to the three twelve, there's a big tier gap. And those guys were not drafting a quarterback there. So if that does happen, I'm fine loading up on three running backs off the rip. Uh, if this is a one quarterback league, you're going to have less running backs probably available to you there at the end of the first round at the end of the second round, you'll probably be choosing between one of those running backs there or one of the high end wide receivers. And I'm, I'm fine dicing up the difference between the two, you know, going with uh, Calvin Ridley at the 210 and then Joe Mixon at the 3-3. I'm fine leaving a wide receiver with one of the first three picks if it is not a two quarterback super flex league. But the point to get across here again is running backs and quarterbacks are so fucking important super flex and the high end running backs are the most important. But once you get down to the bottom end of the quarterback ones, the high end quarterback twos and super flex, don't let that push up the value because yes, they're valuable only because you need to be playing one of them. You need to have someone in your quarterback two slot, but they're not that much of a difference maker over the quarterback 19 or 20. So wait on that quarterback two if you want. Um, and then wide receivers, you know, you're just sitting there waiting to nail them in rounds four, five, six, seven. Like there is just so much depth on top of the depth on top of depth there. Like I waited till the 410 and I still ended up with Keenan Allen, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. I don't necessarily love it. Like I wish Brandon Ayuk fell to me at the 7-3 or Tyler Lockett or Deontay Johnson. I would have taken any of those three over Robert Woods, but it fucking happens. Okay. 
Um, and again, if you're in a one quarterback league, I think the end of the fourth, early fifth is where you should be targeting Kyler Murray. And then a guy like Terrell Henderson, if you do end up skipping on running backs early, the tight end position, if I, if I don't see any of the top guys fall to a really, really good value, if Kelsey doesn't fall to me into the second round, um, and probably not even in the same vein where I'm the one, one to the one, four. Yeah. He needs to fall to me where I am right now, like the two ten, two nine for me to take Kelsey. Waller needs to fall to the end of the third for me to take him. Kittle probably is, you know, end of the, uh, in the fourth round for me to take him. So unless they fall to me at extreme value, I will be missing out on the top three tight ends. The only one I like in the middle tier is TJ Hawkinson, which fortunately goes the latest, but 5'10 is still too early for me, especially when you have a lot of good players still on the board. I don't think Hawkinson is a difference maker at the position. He's just a really solid floor player uh, who saw over 100 targets last year, and now you're losing 100, 250 targets between Jones, Galladay, fucking Jamal Agnew, Danny Amendola leaving. It's really like 265 targets open up in that offense. He should get a lot of them. Uh, so I think he's got a really high floor. Um, had he dropped to me where I was at the 6-10, 7-3, that's where I would grab TJ Hawkinson. If not, you want Robert Tunyon in the next turnaround, okay? Promise you that. Grab Tunyon, grab quarterbacks, grab running backs early. And that is what we're doing with the 1-4, 1-1, 4 Again, at the quarterback position, I like Kyler in that spot. If you don't grab him, doesn't really matter. Grab some guys later on in the draft. Grab Kirk Cousins and then Trey Lance. You want one upside running. You want one upside quarterback. But again, this is not necessarily for picks one through four. This is just overall one quarterback general strategy. I hope this helped you guys uh, that have picks one through four. If it didn't, if you have any questions still remaining, please let me know. I hope I was clear. Kind of just went off the rip for 25, 30 minutes, but uh, tried to give you as much knowledge from the noggin as I possibly could. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are doing picks five through eight tomorrow, nine through 12 the following day, which should get a little bit more tricky because the first round is, is getting dicey this year. So that's it. Love y'all. Hit that thumbs up button and, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.